Previously on Marshall and Amy, we start the day off at the official Bialetti store buying our very own mocha pot before exploring the oldest standing structure in Rome, the Pantheon. Then we're on the hunt for traditional Roman street food, pizza al taglio, and suppli. Keep watching for part two of our ultimate day in Rome. All right, so after we've got the suppli, we went back to try them. They're super delicious, and then we we're like, let's just lay down for like 20 minutes, get our batteries recharged for the Vatican. And we lost track of time. <laughs> and so now we're like hurrying, like hauling ass to the Vatican to make it into the Vatican Museum in the Sistine Chapel on time. So let's hope we make it. Anyone coming to the Vatican Museum and the Sistine Chapel, you have to go all the way around the outside of Vatican City from St. Peter's Basilica to get in. So definitely factor in some time for that. Yeah, you're walking, you see St. Peter's Basilica, and you're like, okay, that's super close. We got plenty of time. No, dude, you gotta go all the way around. So just a heads up. The only thing standing between us and our seventh country right now is this wall. The other side is Vatican City. of St. Peter's Basilica from behind. How many countries have we been through now? Seven. We're in our seventh country. Seven's a holy number, so we're feeling, feeling good today. <laughs> So apparently this right here, that cistern, it's made of this like famous purple stone that the emperors used as like a like a show off of like, hey, you know, this is the imperial color of purple. Stone's very rare, it only comes from one mountain in Egypt. And apparently this was uh, Emperor Nero's. Um, and it's so big and heavy that this room you see that I'm standing in was built around the tub itself. It'd make one hell of a hot tub right there. 15 feet across. So this is like the same stone as the periphery and you can really see here how purple it is. It looks like like wine in stone form. It's crazy. It's literally like the color of wine. So we're just listening to Rick Steves and we're walking through this beautiful hall, as you can see above me. There's maps on either side. This side is the east side of Italy. This side is the left side of Italy, or the west side, east side of Italy. And at the back, back there, is the south of Italy. And up there, it ends with the Alps. And so it's like, a, you're like walking through a comprehensive map of Italy. We're looking for the places we've been. That right there is Venice. We stayed like right there. As we exited the incredible gallery of maps, the star of the show loomed in the distance, the Sistine Chapel. Built in 1473, it took the infamous artist Michelangelo four years to finish his work. The painted ceiling covers an impressive 12,000 square feet and depicts scenes from the Bible's Old Testament. We literally just left the chapel and it was one of the most underwhelming things I've ever seen in my life. It was just way different than I expected. Way different. I mean, way so different. much different. It's tiny. It's so small. I knew it would be tiny because it's called a chapel. I think Marshall thought it was going to be a lot bigger, but I went to the paintings to be totally different. I, I shouldn't have used the word underwhelming. It was it was just so different from what I expected that like it threw me. Like yeah. it didn't look anything like how it is portrayed. Like the famous scene where God is touching Adam, it is like this big. I thought it was like enormous. I thought that was like, a, I thought that was, like the main part of the whole yeah. ceiling. 
and it was tiny. <laughs> it was just like, like you had to really look for it. Yeah, so just a lot different than, than what I expected. Although the Sistine Chapel didn't quite live up to our expectations, it was finally time to make our way over to what was sure to knock our socks off, St. Peter's Basilica. All right, that officially ends our trip through the Vatican Museums and the Sistine Chapel. Pretty cool, glad we saw it, but now we're heading over to St. Peter's Basilica. We're gonna check that one out. I think that one's gonna be awesome. We'll see. St. Peter's Basilica is truly an unforgettable experience. The sheer size of it is breathtaking. To put in perspective how big it really is, Bernini's Baldacchino at the center of the basilica is 96 feet tall, yet it's dwarfed by the 448 foot dome that crowns the Vatican just overhead. The basilica we see today was commissioned by Pope Julius II in 1506, but a religious structure has stood in this location since 326 AD. This site is of significant importance due to its placement on top of St. Peter's tomb, hence its namesake. Alright, so we just left St. Peter's Basilica. Very fitting end to our Italian trip. That was easily, easily the best thing we I saw in Italy. Everything pales in comparison. It's the most impressive building I've ever been in. You can't even comprehend the size until you see it with your own eyes. I just was... It's so impressed and easily the best thing we saw in Italy, in my opinion. So cool. If you're ever here, I mean, you have to, you have to do it. It's free, get to go to another country, and the building itself is just absolutely insane. Italy. Vatican City? Italy. We've walked almost 10 miles today. By the time we're done, it's going to be 10 miles, so we still got to pack, because tomorrow we leave for Dublin. Island, here we come. Mm -hmm. 